It is Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival 2024, day two. We are here before the madness of the day begins. It was a really busy day yesterday, so today we're gonna to take a look at some new products and projects around the show. In this video, we're gonna be showing you some new stuff from the folks at Big Tree Tech. This video from Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival 2024 is brought to you by the fine folks at Big Tree Tech. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Big Tree Tech launched a bunch of new products this week, so let's start right over here with this little can expander board. So this is almost like a clipper expander where it adds extra ports and uh, add-ons for your build, but it's just for CAN bus items. So if you're running something like a tool changer or just a machine that has a lot of devices on CAN, this board's gonna allow you to basically split out to all of those and ha not have a bunch of daisy-chained parts together, having to run cables extra long lengths just to get the signals where you need them. This will allow you to have a much cleaner and more organized wiring setup. It's using standard JST-XH connectors for your downstream connections of data and then some terminal blocks for your 24 volt power supply but on the input side on connecting to your Raspberry Pi your CB2 you've got a couple of options with an XT30 type connector an RJ connector or you can also use the JST connector as well for the input this adds up to six additional CAN bus ports to your build I think stealth changer is definitely going to be the star of the show when using this to go right along with adding on to your CAN system, we have the new eddy sensor. This is an eddy current sensor that is a scanner for your bed surface. So when you're bed leveling, it can actually just quickly sweep along the surface of the bed and get a really rapid and very fine bed mesh. I mentioned it right after the CAN expander because it can be connected in multiple different ways, including via the CAN bus, allowing for a potential of a cleaner wiring setup for your project. I love to see anything that simplifies not having to home run a bunch of USB or additional CAN cables. It still can be connected via USB or an I2C connection. So if you're running something that doesn't have a add-on CAN port like an EBB36 that does have an I2C connector, so you can still wire to that. Right on the same board, we have the new turbo fan, which is just a CPAP fan setup, but from the folks at Big Tree Tech and easier to integrate into your builds. I'm gonna be doing a Voron 2.4 using CPAP in the near future, and I like the idea of this. If you're not familiar, one of these little blower fans that moves a lot of air as is installed on this Voron 2.4 right now, these traditionally come with a fan controller board, but it is only meant to dial in with a rheostat and like dial in exactly how much fan output you have, which is not ideal for our uses in 3D printing where we might want to adjust fan for overhangs versus your regular layer printing. So now they have an add-on board that comes with this turbo fan setup that allows you to just connect it to your standard fan port connection on your main board of your machine, probably from Big Tree Tech, and that will allow you to control the fan directly from your interface, your firmware, and not have to have some additional hardware control. There are traditionally ways of doing this via the GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi, but this is gonna be so much simpler and easier to control from G-code, not have to create create some custom macros just to adjust your fan speed. The last thing on this board that I wanna talk about is the SKSM. This is just a safe shutdown module for your clipper powered system. Something like just flipping the power switch off will kill power to your Raspberry Pi, your CB2, whatever control board you're running in your machine, and that can corrupt your operating system. They are intended to be properly shut down by sending a shutdown command. This will allow for a little bit of backup power to be contained in the capacitors on it and allow for a safer shutdown, not such an abrupt power loss that causes those corruption issues. BQ is expanding the Panda line with the new Panda CHT. This is a standard RepRap style nozzle inside of a ceramic heater core on a heat sink that will fit into your bamboo machines, allowing for some higher flow rates out of that hot end. This is a new expansion off of their previous setup, the Panda Revo, which allowed for use of Revo nozzles in a bamboo machine. Now that was claiming about 40 millimeters cubed per second using one of the high flow nozzles from E3D. The new Panda Flow CHT comes with a Bontex CHT nozzle for higher flow and is rated at 45 millimeters cubed per second, allowing you to bump up your flow rate on your machine and push speeds a little harder. I almost forgot, they also now have some of these nice little 
clicky switches to add on some macro buttons to the front of a Voron or any other machine you want to integrate these into. Press one of these and you can trigger a related macro command for heat up, cool down, whatever you might want to tie to these switches, allowing you to manually operate the machine, not have to jump into console to control how you want to set things up. They also launched this week something really interesting to me, the new CB2 and Pi 2. These allow for a lot more horsepower, processing power, and functionality built onto an SPC, a single board computer. One of the stars of the show here is a 24 volt terminal block on here. So you can send 24 volt input to this as most 3D printers currently are running and not have to worry about running some dedicated external five volt power supply just for your single board computer. It has two gigabytes of RAM now for a little more processing power, a CSI port for camera input and a DSI port for display output as well as touchscreen input. That's great for your clipper screen setups that a lot of folks are loving to run on their machines. There's 32 gigabytes of more reliable EMMC storage on here, so you don't need to rely on a often flaky SD card slot for running your entire operating system off of it, though you still have an SD card slot if you want for expansion or you need to run a bigger storage setup. And I actually don't see any mention of it in the marketing material at the moment, but there's an M.2 slot on the bottom of this thing, so you might be able to use a commodity SSD on this for significantly better price per gigabyte storage and reliability right on this board without any additional stuff. I've been running a lot of my machines off of external SSDs running inside of housings or 2.5 SSDs over USB, which is still not the most reliable or highest speed. This might be a really great option for faster and more reliable storage. And of course, you're not just limited to running your clipper powered machine with this board. You can run anything Linux operating system based that will run on this processor, which by the way is a rock chip RK3566. They've got a little arcade setup going over here using the HDMI output and a controller uh, to have a whole little gaming setup just powered off of one of these Pi 2s. With the release of Pi 2, they've also partnered up with the folks at Obico to add AI to your 3D printer for spaghetti detection, remote monitoring of a farm of printers or even just one, and you can do it over the cloud or set up your own home server. Let me know if you'd like to see me set up an Obico setup. I've been meaning to do it forever for my studio, and I think it could be interesting. Thank you so much to the folks at Big Tree Tech for bringing some awesome new products to the market. Uh, they are always expanding what we can do with our 3D printers via technology. So thank you to them and thank you once again to them for sponsoring my trip to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival 2024. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here showing you folks not just their products, but everything I'm going to be showing you in other videos. Thanks again. See you folks.